You understand parents than the best that they have. So you stand like a Statue of Liberty welcoming the dreamers, drifters, students deemed as unteachable, branded inner city, sometimes coming with more labels than a Walgreens pharmacy. And as the ocean waves crash against the New York water, my students' hopes smashed into reality where budget cuts remind us that potential is way too large to be supported by a federal government that has more important wars to enforce. So parents and teachers, we carry our torches of inspiration to remind them about deeds that transform into C pluses. Honor roll certificates, award-winning speeches, first place for rented ribbon winners, Harvard acceptances. See, we're not just b-ball champs, which seems to be the only positive thing I ever read in the paper. They never bothered to publish our test scores higher than the national average that at other schools calling my principal asking, how did test scores on Brown Street get so high? They act surprised. But inner city is not synonymous with stupid or lazy. So they cut our budget. Send kids with budget money out, refuse to bust kids in, build new plus schools to attract students, and with no air conditioning in the heat, barely working heat in the cold, from dilapidated buildings, we still graduate scholars that walk the streets as noble soldiers, forced to battle in concrete fields daily, but still find time to do homework, find new bears, and hand stitch me angel wings inside of eloquently written thank you notes. And their kindness makes it easy for me to wake up early in the morning carrying my corrected copy of the United States History Textbook so my students can see how the first U.S. terrorists are glorified as explorers, how the presidents are still exploiting the poor, how our ancestors held the sun in the palm of their hands. We'll reach into the sky and shove shooting stars into our backpacks so for once we can snap off of our dreams and we'll see that we don't need drugs, just more faith and more love in one another. And that can carry us higher than the sky smoking the crack of water. And here in my classroom, we speak in our native tongue, our native tongue, heaven. Maybe that's why we're so misunderstood. It's hard to translate God into human. I guess that's why the Egyptians drew hieroglyphs. But together, together we'll master this language to attain the status our pride deserves by deciphering the devil snakes hiding in dollar signs. And though I find they tisk at my teacher's salary, they question of my students' capabilities. And as we are hit with bricks of status quo told, my ideals will burn down like the Twin Towers. We will not cower. See, we have the power of grandparents' wishes, of parents' kisses, the stories of freedom riding, uncles and aunts, the hugs of warm sisters and brothers that keep our children believing in their dreams. And the evening news would have you believe that there is no love, that there is no hope on these streets, but we write with our back to the TV set destined to prove that black and brown urban unicorns too exist. And whether you live on 35th and Brown in Harlem or being blocked by invisible fences of Mexico, students, children, they deserve the same opportunities.